Hey guys, in this video I would like to show you 15 cool Mac OS X applications. The first one I want to show you is Alfred, which is basically a Spotlight replacement. It's got um, some more advanced um, functionality built in than Spotlight. In case you don't know what Spotlight is, it's basically this search menu that pops up in the top right hand corner. Um, I'm going to quickly show you the settings. I have got it to launch at login and I have given it the spotlight um, hotkey which is basically command space. Uh, let me quickly show you some of the built-in features. Um, it has a built-in calculator so you could do 5 times 5,000 and it would give you the answer. It's also got a built-in dictionary so you can define, I don't know, chair and it will give you a definition of the word chair. You can um, get it to open a blank email for you. And that will um, just open your default email client with an email address to that email address. You've got some address book functionality. Uh, you have got some iTunes functionality. There is even an iTunes mini player, which I have currently got set with Alt Command Backspace. And see, this is what it basically looks like. So I can search for a band and I can navigate through the albums and I can select the song to play, etc. Um, that is pretty neat. Um, we also have a clipboard. So if you type in that command, it will bring up the clipboard. And it's got the history of um, the recent things I have copied and pasted to the clipboard. Uh, it's got um, built-in one password functionality, though that is a completely different app. Um, and there are a number of um, different commands here, you know, to bring on the screensaver, to, um, you know, empty the trash can, to log out, to shut down and restart the computer, etc. To eject um, media, to hide, quit and force quit apps. So, you know, for example, um, I could type quit ITV and as you may have just seen that just um, quit the application. We also have extensions. Um, to get extensions um, I believe that you need to buy the power pack. Um, the power pack I believe will cost you um, 15 um, GBP which is approximately 25 US dollars um, from memory. Um, so it's not the cheapest, um, you know, program to buy, though it's definitely worth the money. Um, I have currently got three scripts and one Apple script um, installed. Uh, this one is called Alfred um, Treat. I really like this one because you type in TW and then you start typing your treat. And when you click enter, it will treat what you say after TW. There is no faster way to send a treat in Mac OS X. So let me show you. So I just sent a treat saying hello and it's now giving me a growl notification saying that I sent a treat called hello. And if I now check, I just sent a treat called hello. Um, and we have down for everyone. In case you aren't aware, this will tell you if, for example, Google is down for everyone or just you. So if I type in down, which is the keyword, it will now tell me it's just you, google.com is up. So if I try it with a fake domain, it's not just you, blah, is down. So that's um, a neat utility or extension, squit, um, time somewhere. So the keyword is time in. So I could do time in New York. And it will bring up the current time in New York, which is pretty cool. Um, I quite like this one, that's Spotify controls. So you just type in spot and the command. Um, I'm not sure if there are any I can show you. I don't want to play any songs for copyright reasons. Um, so what will happen if I type in spot now? 
Okay, it will tell you that I'm now playing that song, or that's the most recent song that I played. I quite like that um, Spotify control script. Um, we have hotkeys, I won't bore you with that. We have a few different um, themes. I'm currently using dark and smooth. Then we have a few different ones which are included um, when you buy the power pack. Um, I won't bore you and go through all of those settings, though I think you get the gist of um, how it works. Um, you know, it's very powerful, and some of these extensions are really powerful too. Um, I can't remember all of the um, commands. So you can type in things like TW mentions, and then it will um, display your most recent mentions, etc. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty good um, application. I highly recommend checking it out. Or it's a spotlight replacement, really. Uh, next, I want to show you Total Finder. Um, it will cost you US $18, so you can pretty much use it for free as long as you like. Um, it will just come up with a message um, saying that it's unregistered if you do not pay for it. What makes Total Finder really good is a couple of um, things. First of all, you have um, tabbed browsing, which is pretty cool. You can also um, sort of open up tabs and combine them by double clicking. So you can drag and drop between the tabs. Um, it also has built-in cut and paste functionality. So I can create a folder, cut it, paste it to the desktop, which um, I quite like. Um, having come, you know, over to Mac OS X from Windows 7, I quite, you know, miss the whole cut and paste functionality. And the tabs just make things, you know, so much easier. You know, if you um, have a Mac, then this is a must-have application. It is um, so much better than the Finder. Okay, what's the next application here? We have WriteZoom, which is a free application. I will show you what um, WriteZoom does. Um, if you have come over from Windows, you're probably going to miss the functionality of the Maximize button. And right soon basically changes the function of the zoom button to the maximize button, um, which is quite nice. Um, you know, it always used to annoy me how the zoom button worked. So if you prefer the maximize functionality, then I highly recommend downloading right soon. The next one is Paragon NTFS for Mac. Um, I have got a drive here, a portable hard drive. If I go over to get info. You can see that it is Windows NT file system, aka NTFS. Um, and usually I would only be able to read and copy files over. I wouldn't be able to write. However, I am now able to write because I have got this um, program installed, which I will quickly show you. It is Paragon NTFS for Mac. Um, I'm currently running the 10-day trial. I will probably buy it when the trial is over. So it's pretty simple. You just install it once and you can forget about it. Your computer can read and write to NTFS drives, which is pretty cool. Um, next, I would like to show you, you know, a couple of virtualization programs that you are probably um, already aware of. We have Parallels Desktop 7. Um, I won't launch any virtual machines, so I've currently got Windows 7, Ubuntu, the consumer preview of Windows 8. Um, I quite like how Parallels works. There's also an iPad app which you can use to control the operating systems um, on your computer. And with Windows 7, you can insert your disk into the product key and it will actually do the whole installation process um, for you. Um, it will cost you US $79.99, though if you search the web, you will be able to find a few promotions to get it cheaper. And there is, of course, VirtualBox, which is a free um, virtualization program available on pretty much every platform, you know, Windows, Mac OS X, Linux. Um, I highly recommend um, checking out this program. It's a very good free um, program, um, you know, which is basically developed by Oracle now. Okay, and what is next? We have Growl. Um, you might have seen the notifications coming up here in the top right hand corner before. They were Growl notifications. Um, Growl is basically a notification program. So here is a history of all of my notifications um, from different programs. I have currently got the latest version, which is 1.3.3. 
which will cost you a dollar ninety nine from the Mac App Store. However, a lot of applications use an older version of Growl, which is Growl version one point two, I believe. If you have an older application and the notifications aren't working, then I highly recommend downloading the Growl version detective, which I believe I have here in my downloads folder. Uh, it will take a little while to um, find all of the different apps on your computer which use Growl. Just give it a second. Uh, yep, so here are all the different applications on my computer which are using Growl. Um, when I first installed Alfred, um, Growl wasn't working with it. So I decided to upgrade the firmware which um, fixed the issue. And if it hadn't fixed the issue, I would have had the option to revert the firmware. So, um, you know, the chances are that you might even already have Growl installed on your computer because a lot of applications um, will actually install Growl for you if you don't already have it. Uh, next, I would like to show you Smash Tunes, which is um, this thing up here. It basically displays the name of the song and the artist. Um, you can choose how you want it to look. Though I was sick of going back and forth to iTunes every time I wanted to see what was um, playing. So it will basically just tell you the current song and the artist. Um, and I believe that there is an option to show the album artwork as well. Which you can sort of, you know, drag around and it stays on top of the current app. So that is um, pretty cool and you've also got, you know, a few different options here. It's playing up a bit because I've got both um, Spotify and iTunes open at the same time, which is never a good idea. Though you basically um, get the general idea of how that works. Um, and what else do we have? That was Smash Tunes. Next we have Handbrake. Handbrake is basically for converting videos and ripping DVDs. Um, I'm not going to show you now. Though you can basically insert any DVD. You then choose the title, which is usually the title with the longest duration, which is the movie. I usually select um, Universal, um, the Universal Apple profile. And then you just um, click Start and it will output the movie um, to a file on your desktop. Handbrake is um, completely free and I highly recommend it if you want to, you know, turn your DVD into a digital copy. Um, and I also have iFlix, which will cost you US $19.99. Um, iFlix is basically for finding movie information. I will show you how it works. So basically, I navigate to the file which I just um, ripped from a DVD using Handbrake. In this case, I have Austin Powers Gold Member, so I can change the name to that. And I can click Reload, and it will populate the file with all of the um, appropriate, you know, metadata or metadata, whatever it's called. And then after that, I can click um, um, Move Original to Trash, and it will move that one to the trash, and it will put the movie in the iTunes movie directory. And I can, you know, just um, click Start um, for that to happen. Though I've already done it with this movie, so I'm not going to now. So that is basically iFlix. Next, we have um, ScreenFlow, which I am currently recording this recording with. It will cost you US $99.99. Uh, where is it? Here is ScreenFlow. Uh, here is um, a recording from one of the other videos that I did recently um, for Linux Mint. Um, I don't really do a lot of editing in my videos. I generally just um, cut off the end um, a bit. So, you know, it is really good. There's quite a bit of um, functionality in the program. It's by far the best um, screen recording program. So if you don't want to pay $100, then I believe that um, QuickTime actually has the functionality for, you know, screen recordings, you know, which is completely free. Um, so that is ScreenFlow. Next, I'd like to show you Chronicle, which is basically a bill um, management program. So you can basically list all of your different bills in Chronicle. Um, at the top here, I have my Netflix um, bill. 
and you can see, you know, how much I have paid the past um, few months for Netflix. You know, it's gone up and down a bit, depending on the exchange rate. Um, so, yeah, I quite recommend this program. It's, you know, very good for managing your bills. You can, you know, have, um, you know, payments which automatically log themselves, or you can manually um, log payments. You know, you put in the date that the bill was paid, the amount you paid, you can attach a receipt, etc. So I highly recommend Chronicle if you want an easy, effective way to manage all of your bills. Um, next, I have put Steam. Um, you might think that this is a bit of an unusual program to include in the list. The reason I choose Steam is you might not have a Mac or a Sex, you know, computer forever. You know, you can either buy a game in the Mac App Store, which is only compatible with, you know, Mac, or you can buy a Mac or a Sex game in Steam, and you will have access to the same game on both your Mac and the Windows computer. That's why I recommend getting all of your games through Steam whenever possible, rather than through the Mac App Store. So I think for that reason, Steam was worth putting into the list. Uh, next, I am going to choose Google Chrome for a similar reason. Um, yeah, I'm choosing it for a similar reason because um, obviously Google Chrome is um, cross-platform. It's available on, you know, Windows, Mac OS X, um, Linux, and you can sync all of your bookmarks, um, etc. from every browser, you know, on every operating system quite easily. So I highly recommend Google Chrome as your default browser. Um, I recommend TweetDeck as your default, um, you know, Twitter client, um, unless you want to use um, Alfred Tweet um, through Alfred. Um, this is the old version, TweetDeck version 0.38.2. I highly recommend finding and downloading this version of TweetDeck. If you get TweetDeck through the Mac App Store or um, probably even on the official TweetDeck um, website now, it is a later version because um, Twitter bought TweetDeck and the new version of TweetDeck is just not very good. They, were, they removed about 50% of the application's um, functionality. The new version looks a little nicer though it's missing so many features that it's not funny. Um, next I want to show you Pixelmator. Um, this is sort of a, I wouldn't compare it to iTunes, so it's basically, um, it's kind of like GIMP. It's a good um, application for modifying images, etc. Here's one I've been working on. But yeah, I quite um, recommend Pixelator or Pixelmator. Um, if you want to, you know, do basic, um, you know, image editing, I would compare this program to Adobe Fireworks, not quite as good though, it's, you know, quite good. I recommend it for, you know, $30. And lastly, I want to recommend Shortcuts for Mac, which you probably just saw before in the web browser. Um, there are so many different shortcuts which you probably have no idea about, though if you read through all of the different categories, you might discover a few that you never knew existed. You know, for example, this application helped me a bit when I first moved over from Windows 7 to Mac OS X. Um, you know, for example, taking screenshots. You know, it has all of the different screenshot combinations. You know, for example, com Command Shift 3 um, will allow you to take a screenshot and it will save the file to your desktop. It's taken a screenshot of my second monitor for some reason. And, you know, there are a few different ones here. Command Shift 4 takes a screenshot of a screen area and saves it to your desktop. Like such. So, um, yeah, this is quite a handy application. Um, I believe it only costs some um, $2. Oh, no, it's only 99 cents. So, you know, it's definitely worth it. You know, it shows you a bunch of um, different shortcuts and it gets um, updated every now and again. So... Yeah, I highly recommend um, getting it and going through all of the different shortcuts. Um, so that is pretty much it for this video, really. Um, if you have any questions about the applications, then feel free to ask me. Or if you think that I should have um, included a different application in the list, then I'll mention it in the comment section below. So that is it for this video, and thank you for watching.